But first, break out your rally caps because everything is awesome again. Stocks rocketing higher on news. The U.S. and China are returning to the table for a new round of trade talks. The Dow surging 372 points. First best day since August 13th. The S&P 500 now less than 2% away from new all-time highs. So, is everything really awesome again, Guy? <laughs> you know all the hype. That song is, a, is annoying. An I know. No, it's and, oh, I kind of like it. Well, let's do wedding song. Yeah, we'll see your wedding we song. We danced for that huh? first day. And, and it's right. your ringer. You and Steve did? <laughs> no, Steve and I, well, one time. It was a great day. It was a wonderful day. Anywho. It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Remember uh, that whole thing? Right. No, okay. I don't think everything's <laughs> awesome. I think what actually changed today, and I think Pete might have talked about it, is... The fact that the Chinese tweeted this, it wasn't a President Trump tweet about, you know, me and my good friend President Xi are getting back to the table. So maybe that changes the tune a little bit, although I still think we're really far away from a deal. With that said, you know, we do this thing at the, at the uh, what's that, the plasma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Called the power pitch. All the fast. And I'm not pretending I'm bullish. I'm not. And I said it last week. I said, but sometimes you can trade things within the framework of a market. And last week, dull market into a holiday. The market should rally. You see in the banks rally. We power pitch Citibank. And I think you're seeing it manifest itself over these last couple of days. I still think we go lower. I still think the VIX is going to trade north or around 30. And I think that will be the bottom of the S&P 500. I wish I could tell you when, but I think we're closer to it after today. See? Remember what we said last week, though, to all, all your points that you just made? Never short a dull, dull market. market. Don't fight the Fed. Mm -hmm. And now we've broken out. We did nothing for a month, and we're above the 50-day moving average right now. So I would say we are going to go higher. Who would short the market ahead of that meeting? Ahead of the Fed? No. No. Ahead of the, ahead uh, of the trade talks. Because now, uh, to Guy's point, I think you're going to, to get Guy's a good point, though, you heard it from the Chinese now, that know, they're but, looking at the meeting. It, it, it might happen. It's probably going to happen. The chances of it happening are better than it was last week or two I, weeks they ago. They very well may have a meeting, but Lucy's going to pull the football away again. It happens every single time. But you I can't mean, short the market until Why Lucy can't I short the market? Football. I can do whatever I want. I, I mean, I think you can short the market ahead of that <laughs> meeting, depending on where it goes. Today, we're up 400, 300 some odd points in the Dow. I mean, that's probably short covering, repositioning. But I, I just don't think anything's changed whatsoever. And every single time, we've been going through this for over a year now, oh, we have a meeting, and then the meeting falls apart, and then somebody tweets something, and, and we just go nowhere. So why would this be any different this time? Or somebody hikes tariffs all of a sudden by tweet. Exactly. I think the one thing that does make it slightly different, however, is the fact that it wasn't Trump. And the fact that it was the Chinese. So it's more believable. It's, well, I mean, if, you, if you've lost belief in the president because the tweets have become numb to everybody, then all of a sudden this is not Trump. This is not President Trump, I should say. But it's the Chinese saying, hey, look, we want to sit down. We want to have a conversation. I, I think that a lot of this has to do with what's going on in the economy over in China as much as anything. I mean, we all talk about all the negatives about what's going on and some of the different numbers that are bad here at the United States, but mostly around the rest of the world. The numbers coming out of China are pretty awful. And uh -huh. I think that's getting worse and will continue to get worse. So the idea that volatility will remain volatile, I agree with what Guy was saying. Whenever we see these dips, Tuesday we had a pretty decent dip. I think those are opportunities for some of the buying. I think a move like we've had over the last couple of days, I don't disagree with you necessarily, but I still think you have to trade what, this market. What sure. has changed? What is, and I know you, you're, you're not, you can't be in the mind of the Chinese negotiators. It yeah. is impossible. Right. But, well, I mean, or, what do you think has, has really changed from the Chinese perspective, aside from a couple of data points, which we probably knew were going to get worse anyway? I mean, what, what's changed is... Is what 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 impetus, what impetus do they have for having these talks? People are moving out ahead, of China. Ahead, Apple, ahead, Google, ahead. people are going to start moving production lines well, out of China. But it's not happening right now. It's not happening. It's not happening is right it, now. Is it going to happen? I will don't anyone, know. Will, uh, you really don't know. Uh, do you, You're a do smart, you really think, intelligent woman. Do you woman. really think that Apple's going to have the capability to remove all of their manufacturing yes. from not all, China? Not all. They said twenty percent. So 20% is going to be moved out. Google's going to start moving it out. Any, co any corporation right now is going to look at it or start to move production out of China. They don't so want to So all lose. of a sudden the Chinese are scared of that? Uh, not all of a sudden. It's actually happening. So it's taken a long uh, enough I, effect I, now that it's happening. I, you could say no, but I mean, these well, are companies just, that are saying it. So, I mean, the framework that I'm, that I'm using for this trade war, it is going to drag out until the election. No matter what the economy does here in the U.S. and no matter what the economy does in China, I personally don't think that's a motivator. I think this is just a tactic to drag this thing along. And at the end of it all, we end up in a world where China and the U.S. are split and the supply chains are split. 
and that's going to create turmoil in the market. Do we go another 3% higher? Maybe. I don't know. But, you know, we've been churning around for 18 months. I don't see anything today that changes my mind that says, oh, the Chinese are ready to make a deal. They're going to do it today because they said they're meeting. They had the 70th anniversary of the PRC October 1st. Uh, the Hong Kong situation seems to have cooled down a little now. bit. So what, what changed in the past week or two that makes them want, in your, your mind, to come to the table Again, I, anymore I, I, and get I don't deal think back? anything's necessarily changed. I, think, I mean, I understand what Steve is saying. I don't think anything has necessarily changed. Maybe the, maybe the fact that things are deteriorating over there, maybe it forces them to send a tweet like that to sort of cool the, cool the engines a bit before this meeting. But again, they could have a meeting on October 2nd, October 3rd, whenever it is. I don't think anything's going to come from it. I think the parties are way are far too divided. There are too many things out there that I don't think the U.S. will agree to. You could short the market the after that meeting, though, to. but would you short it before the meeting? I, I, think you, I think to Brian's point, you probably can't. I mean, the VIX, I think the VIX is headed higher. I'll say it again. I'm surprised it's here. I'd be the first one to tell you that. But in this environment, a VIX at 20 is too cheap, let alone a VIX at and 16 and a half. Clearly, the jobs report on Friday is going to be a very big deal ahead of a Fed meeting. It's going to be a big deal, but I think we're, we already know it's going to be 25 basis points. Before, we weren't sure if it was going to be anything because there was that back and forth between Trump and Powell. And then we had Dudley come on the scene, and we said, all right, we're guaranteed 25 basis points. It may be 50 basis points. Now we know we're getting 25 basis points, and we're going to get another 25 after. Unless the ECB does less, which takes the pressure off the yeah, Fed. Yeah, I mean, the there's, ultimate market there's a lot of cross currents, right? I mean, we saw a lot of different things. We saw now Brexit's off the table for the time being, mm -hmm. at least until October, it seems, right? So that's the currency volatility is tamped down. We have um, Christine Lagarde coming into the ECB, so perhaps their policy is on hold for a little bit. So we are in this period of detente, oh, but at geez. any moment of time, you could have currency volatility go through the roof. You could have uh, stock market volatility go through the roof.